What's going on dreamers? My name's Acer and in this video I'm going to show you how to save the position of a timeline in a variable. This will allow you to return to the scene and have the timeline start where it was when you left the scene originally. This is the scene and if we leave and come back you'll notice how it starts in the exact place we left it. So why would you want to do this? The best example I can come up with and the one that I feel like is why most people would want this is for a cinematic. So if you have a cinematic that's any length of time, I guess, and the player leaves and then goes back in, uh, that cinematic would be would restart. If you see here, the ball was right there. We exit and go back in, and it's, con it's, it's continuing. The animation is continuing from where it left off. So this is the scene. This is the scene. It looks kind of complicated. It really isn't, like, at all. This is actually really simple. Um, so let's just look. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about some things first. So this is the timeline that we're saving. It's, it's a relatively lengthy timeline but the actual width of it doesn't matter and I'll tell you why soon but um, anyway the animation is just as you saw the ball moving left to right um, okay so that's the animation let's go into this chip this is like where everything happens um, so this is the timeline position and it's a value that is um, from 0 to 1 that's important because we're putting that that position so we're getting the timeline position and we're putting it into the playhead now the value of a playhead ranges a timelines playhead ranges from 0 to 1 that's why that's the number we're saving we're storing a value from 0 to 1 it's pretty much that easy now all we have to do to play and because the number is saved right so this variable is is persisting in dream in a dream um, this is basically all we need. We, we just put that number into the playhead. The trick though, the tricky part now is how do we change that number? Because you can't just press play on the playhead. That's not gonna work anymore. You can't just power it on. Uh, the playhead is constantly being set to this variable value. So how do we change the variable value? How do we play, quote unquote, the timeline? Um, and we do that by constantly or continuously Increase, uh, increasing the variable's value or decreasing it, depending on what you want to do. Um, and the way to do that is with a variable modifier. So we're adding continuously to timeline position um, what? What are we adding continuously? The number 0 0.01, sorry, the number 0 0.001 times whatever this is, 2.5. I don't know what that comes out to. Honestly, just put this to whatever you want. Um, the The reason I have it um, being multiplied by such a small number is so you have more control over the speed. So you can make it faster. You can make it slower. So you can set the speed to whatever you want. The the This speed, sorry, uh, this speed does not do anything. It does not affect it at all. And the reason it doesn't affect it at all, again, is because we have a value wired directly into the playhead. Uh, so that, but anyway, that's how we, that's how we play the timeline. What else can we do? We can rewind the timeline. Now, normal timelines actually can't do this, but you simply just multiply. It's the same thing. Only instead of multiplying by 0 0.001, it's negative 0 0.001. Now, obviously, if these two things are on at the same time, uh, it's not going to work very well. <laughs> it's just going to stop. So uh, that's why we have this over here. But we'll, we'll look at that soon. So what else can we do? We um, Finally, we can restart it. And that's simply just resetting the variable. The, um, that's just resetting the timeline position variable, and it puts it back at zero. Now, currently, the timeline is not able to loop um, forwards or backwards, and there's no option to do that, but you can just loop it by checking if it's finished, 
and then resetting the variable. I haven't done that in this um, example because that's not what the tutorial is for. The tutorial is for saving a timeline position, not making your own custom timeline. Um, with that said, if you want me to make a tutorial on a custom timeline that can loop forwards or loop backwards um, or do some other stuff, let me know. Um, but anyway, so that's stuff, like that's how the timeline moves. Now, now all we have is this. It's just telling it whether to move forward whether to move in reverse, um, or whether to restart. So, well, this doesn't tell us to restart. I don't have that hooked up, but you can if you want. In fact, I can I can hook it up to, how about, I don't think triangle's being used. So if we hook triangle up to restart, um, you can see, oh, we made the speed really slow. Let's put the speed up a little bit. So if we just press triangle, it goes back to the beginning. So anyway, that is it. That is it, guys. It's really, it's a really simple thing. It's literally just storing the playhead position in a variable and then figuring out how to change the variable to give the illusion that the timeline is playing like normal. In reality, the timeline's not playing like normal. The timeline is hardwired to the variable. I really hope uh, this video helped. I know the concept isn't super advanced or complicated, uh, but th this kind of problem can sometimes be tricky to figure out, um, and variables can sometimes be confusing, so that's why I made the video. Uh, if you need additional Dreams help, I stream Dreams on Twitch every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. I also have a Discord and a Twitter. Uh, so have a great rest of your day, and hopefully I'll see you later. I just wanna be